So Baylor had 11 players enter the National Football League. Some will go immediately, and some camps don't start until another week or two. And we didn't even run them down. You want me to run them down real quick while Terrell is uh, joining us? Yeah, let's, let's go over the ones who, in fact, were not drafted, who were signed first. Let's do that first. Okay, uh, as far as the undrafted guys go, you had Abram Smith basically two minutes after the draft was over with signing with the Saints, and we've seen since that's a pretty nice deal. Uh, Xavier Newman-Johnson to the Tennessee Titans, Raleigh Tejada to the Packers, Jaron McVay to the L.A. Rams, and Drew Estrada was uh, kind of a straggler. He was the last one signed a little bit later, but uh, by Saturday night he had inked with the Houston Texans. So five undrafted free agents for the Bears. And uh, Xavier Newman-Johnson will join us today at around 445 of the Tennessee Titans as well. And then the six draft picks. You had Jalen Petrie early on in the second round. Tyquan Thornton, pick number 50 overall to the Patriots. was pretty awesome to see that. Terrell Bernard to the Buffalo Bills. JT Woods to the L.A. Chargers. Treston Ebner to the Chicago Bears. And Kalen Barnes reuniting with Matt Rule, Phil Snow, Evan Cooper, and all those guys out in Carolina. So six draft picks, five undrafted free agents for an 11-group total. Terrell Bernard joins us of the Buffalo Bills. And Terrell, when you hear us clicking out those names or when you saw them also being taken, drafted, or signed afterwards, including you, what does that all mean? Man, it just means everything. Um, you know, been with you know most of those guys for basically five years, uh, day in and day out. And, you know, just seeing all the work that they put in to, to finally reaching their goals and, you know, seeing everybody do that was just, you know, really amazing. Terrell, did you see your draft announcement, or were you on the phone with the Bills? Because because Kyle Brand, it was pretty wild. <laughs> no, I saw it. I saw it. So the Bills had called me about two or three minutes before um, that had happened. So I was I was sitting there waiting waiting for the announcement. So uh, all of my family was around, going crazy whenever he was up there uh, doing what he did. So it was it was awesome. That was memorable, right? I mean, that, you're never going to forget that when you get drafted, but much less an, an introduction like that. That was that was pretty amazing. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So, Terrell, uh, you know, I was monitoring, you know, your workouts and then all these mock drafts and things like that, and you were kind of just – it just depended, you know, second, third, fourth, fifth round. But when you did get that call from Buffalo, was that surprising to you? Was it expected? And just kind of take us through that moment of getting that phone call that you've been dreaming of for so long and, and just what all that was like. Yeah, definitely. It was awesome, man. Um, you know, I wasn't I wasn't really paying too much attention to mock drafts and things like that, um, just listening to my agent. And, you know, what he was telling me and then, um, you know, what the teams that I had met with uh, were telling me. And, you know, I know that um, it was either going to be late third or early middle of the fourth round. Um, so getting that call, you know, was just, just amazing. Um, you know, definitely just feel your life change uh, when a phone rings. So it was, it was crazy to experience. And, you know, I saw the Buffalo Bills name pop up uh, with the area code and everything. So. You know, just taking it all in and, you know, everything starts running through your head, all the work, everything that you you put into it, um, you know, finally finally coming to fruition. And you've done media interviews today. You're doing us. And then you're going to go straight into a workout because work doesn't stop. But <laughs> everyone waits maybe for a call or an email or something, even a letter when they've applied for a job, looking for a job. What's it like waiting around that long, knowing that it's going to be three days and maybe – you don't know, but uh, you got picked, thank goodness, early on. Yeah, man, definitely nerve-wracking. Um, you know, throughout throughout Friday, um, I was sitting there just kind of contemplating if, if it was really going to happen or not that day. Um, so, you know, I'm sitting with my family. We're all just watching. And, you know, I'm, I'm super excited for all the guys. I think it was Petrie first and then, um, you know, Taekwon to the, to the uh, New England Patriots. And then JT got drafted. So, you know, texting those guys, calling those guys, just congratulating them. You know, sitting there waiting around, um, it's, it's definitely nerve-wracking. You know, you don't really know what's going to happen. Um, but, you know, it's all, it's all worth it when, when you finally get that call. So what's it like to step into a fan base in Buffalo that is, uh, look, and they have a history of, of being deeply scarred, but they are also very deeply passionate. Yeah, man, they were awesome. Uh, you know, I went up there uh, Saturday morning and spent the whole day up there at the facility and, you know, around the town. And uh, it was just, you know, everything that you could imagine. You know, the, the fan base there is 
you know, second to none. Uh, they are deeply, deeply passionate about the Bills, and you know that's that's pretty much you know the main attraction in the city. Um, so it was it was really cool to be up there and meet all the people, uh, meet the staff, um, all the coaches, and things like that. So you know, I'm I'm just blessed to be to be in this position. Terrell, I know there's a lot of exciting things right now, but but how exciting is it to go to a team that obviously plays really good defense? They've got a defensive minded head coach, and you've got guys that you're going to be sitting there around practice with, like Ed Oliver and Von Miller and Tredavious White. Mm-hmm. I mean, it just seems like a great situation for you. Yeah, definitely. I couldn't ask for a better situation. Um, you know, just being around like the guys that you mentioned. Um, you know, it's going to be it's going to be a huge experience for me. For, you know, a great learning opportunity. And um, like you said, we're we're a contender, and you know they've been good for for a pretty good, pretty long time now. So, being in a winning organization uh, around that type of culture is you know very exciting, and you know I'm, I'm ready to get to work. Speaking of culture, we hear about the culture, we've seen the culture, we've heard the culture, we've watched the culture. What was that like, mm-hmm. and and what does it mean for Baylor to set that? You from from the time you arrived with Matt Rule and company to even. Now, of course, with Dave Aranda entering year three, how many people along the way helped you get to where you are right now? Man, everybody that I came into contact with at Baylor, um, I feel like I was able to take something and, you know, learn from really everybody, Um, starting from, you know, Coach Rule and Coach Snow, my defensive coordinator when I first got there, uh, my linebackers coach, Coach Saravo, um, all the way to, you know, support staff, academic staff, strength staff, um, and transitioning into, you know, Coach Aranda's time there. Um, I think I learned, you know, so much that, you know, I can't even be, can't even be quantified. Just, just what they, those guys have taught me and, you know, how to go about my, my day, how to go about my business and handle myself. Um, so, you know, I, I thanked pretty much every single person, um, called them or texted them at least, uh, just telling them how thankful I was for, for the time and effort and energy that they put into all of us throughout, throughout these years. Terrell, what was it like to walk into that Bills facility for the first time? Yeah, it was awesome, man. Uh, so I got to I got to meet the players. Um, you know, talked with Coach McDermott again for a while. Talked to Coach Frazier, the defensive coordinator, um, and then met the owners and you know all the other staff members and stuff. And it was just it was just amazing, man. I couldn't I couldn't you know ask for anything better. Do so- you get free chicken wings now that you're a Bills player? <laughs> <laughs> I uh, hope so. I heard they got the best <laughs> Buffalo wings up there, so I hope so. Yeah, that's uh, that's something that, in fact, the guy that introduced you um, yeah. from the NFL Network had a Buffalo wing in his pocket, I think, from like three days uh, yeah. prior to that, so it was good luck as well. Kyle Brandt. Yeah, yeah, Kyle yeah. Brandt. He was fantastic. <laughs> We're going to try to get him on the show. We need to do that because that's going to be attached to you forever. Thank goodness uh, that it was a great moment. When yeah. how, how many of the guys, and I would think, ton how many text messages what's that like what not you got you're trying to figure out who's going to call you then they do and all this stuff. how many different baylor players or coaches have you heard from yeah man i mean it's it's probably been pretty close to every single one uh you know right after you get drafted you have to do the media stuff for whatever team um picks you so you know trying to trying to log on to the zoom uh was was difficult because my phone wouldn't stop you know <laughs> ringing and blowing up and stuff so um, you know, after I got got through that stuff, you know, I called everybody back or texted everybody back. And, you know, I'm just thankful to have, you know, the guys around me that I do because they're, you know, so supportive and, you know, really care about you um, and care about your situation and, you know, what's going on. So it was it was amazing, you know, just to just to have that opportunity to, you know, reach finally reach, you know, one of your biggest dreams in life and then be supported by, you know, your best friends. Terrell, quite a whirlwind this last year. I mean, really, your whole time at Baylor was a whirlwind, obviously. But, I mean, Big 12 champions and the style that it was done, Sugar Bowl champions, and now, you know, a record number of draft picks. I mean, you guys probably went through more than just about any class possibly did over a four- or five-year stretch. But I know we kind of keep repeating it here, but I, I just can't imagine the level of pride and satisfaction you guys must have. You guys, Petrie, Thornton, et cetera, to, mm-hmm. to have left the mark that you guys left before you before you departed. Yeah, definitely, man. You know, that was that was the main thing we wanted to do um, before we left Baylor was really just leave it in a better place and, um, you know, try to st- help establish, you know, the culture that's there and, um, you know, the winning and the off the field, just everything, man, just tying it all together. And, you know, we felt like we felt like we did. We did a good job at that. Um, 
we ended up, like you said, winning the Big 12, winning the Sugar Bowl, um, getting a bunch of guys drafted, doing a lot of good things off the field. So, you know, we couldn't be more happy. It took a lot of work, a lot of effort, and, you know, we had a lot of help from, you know, all of, all the staff that's that's been through Baylor. So uh, definitely a great feeling to, you know, kind of accomplish what we wanted to accomplish there. I I don't know how many people may have done this, but I did text Matt Rule after, I guess it was after the draft, after the Friday, and the four Mm -hmm. players who were drafted, did he reach out to you guys and do a FaceTime with you? Yeah, he did. Uh, Literally right when I got off of, um, you know, all the media stuff with the Bills uh, social team, uh, he FaceTimed me and, you know, we talked for probably five, ten minutes, um, just, you know, reminiscing. He's telling me how proud he was of me and, you know, just, just how proud we made him and, um, you know, really how, how we kind of took everything and ran with it, and, you know, did it our way and figured it out. So uh, it was definitely a special moment because, you know, I remember being an uh, 18 year old freshman walking in, just terrified, trying to find my way. So, you know, kind of a, a full circle moment. Terrell, you saw the spring game. You and Jalen were there. Others were there as well. What did you see? Did you mm-hmm. see the next wave, you knew some of those guys are back, and then some of them are new. Your thoughts about Baylor moving forward with Coach Aranda? Yeah, I think they're in a, a great position. Um, you know, Coach Aranda is, I think, the best coach in the country. Um, just how he does things and how, how, you know, the team responds to him. And just talking from the spring game, man, I feel like those guys looked, you know, in midseason form, honestly. I think the defense was, you know, catching, catching itself, getting itself together. And, you know, making plays and making things happen. Um, I think you saw the front seven kind of dominating uh, throughout throughout the whole game. And then, you know, on offense with Coach Grimes and Mateos and, you know, Juice and all those guys, I think that's going to be a, a really dangerous group. Um, you know, with Tay running the ball, throwing it to uh, Monterey and guys like that and Josh Cameron, I think those guys have a chance to do, you know, something even more special than what we did. So, okay, man, I'm going to tell you this. Everybody that was drafted and those who were signed afterwards, it it is an incredible group to cover. You many times, Jalen, of course, Abram, all the ones that that we have. We have Xavier Newman, uh, huh? McVay. McVay. uh, Mm -hmm. You know, like Craig said, Drew later on, Drew Estrada later after the draft. It's pretty amazing the group you guys turned out to be from where you came when this when the program what where it was when you arrived and and you you you've made an impact forever on what's happened with Baylor football. We appreciate everything you've done and also good luck to you going forward. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. Thank y'all for having me on. Yeah, man, get get a get a break in there if you can. I know it's probably <laughs> I know it's probably been busy, but try and catch your breath before you know it gets even crazier. But man, congratulations, dude! Everybody's beaming for you, and it was so cool to see where you went and, and who you went to. So, man, we're we're rooting for you. Yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for your time. Thank you, Terrell Bernard. Fantastic story. All of them. All eleven have great stories. He's one drafted by the Bills. Xavier Newman Smith was not. And we'll talk to him a little bit later Johnson. today. Xavier Newman Johnson, excuse me. We'll drop talk to him a little bit later on today at about 445. If I had told you four years ago no. that they were going to have four guys all drafted before the sun came up on Saturday, uh, I, I, I think with those class, you've been like, I don't know, man. I, I'll say this. I mean, Taekwon and Terrell went way higher than I was expecting yeah. them to go. Uh, Jalen went right about where he thought. Uh, Jalen would have been interesting if maybe there wasn't the big receiver to do in the first round if perhaps he sneaks into like the 30th, 31st, 32nd pick. Maybe not. Maybe it would have stayed the exact same way. But either way, he was pegged to go borderline first round late or you know, sometime early in the second, and he – Five picks into the second round, there he was. He was getting picked. But Tyquan at 50, like, are you kidding me? Um, and to the Patriots of all teams, and they trade up for him? Uh, that was definitely a result somewhat of the receiver run. But, hey, it benefited the hell out of him. So good for Tyquan. Like, that's amazing that he went as high as he did, top 50. And then Terrell, you know, I was partially shocked just because of Kyle Brandt's antics of just like I was so caught up in him, you know, eating a chicken wing and screaming and yelling and all that. But then when he announced Terrell Bernard right afterwards, I was like, "Whoa, wait a second!" Like yeah. I had to snap out of it, and then I had to look at like where it was, where it was, and I was like, "Wow, he's going early too!" Like I mean, you know, he just said somewhere, you know, third, fourth round. But I still feel like he he went maybe a shade higher than expected, and and that's awesome. So that was two guys that definitely uh, benefited. How much? Okay, you have to play. But don't you think all 11, and I'm not saying this is a guy that does Sikkim 365 radio, I would think all 11 
of those players who were drafted or signed after the draft were remarkable in the one-on-one -on -one interviews with coaches and players and staff. Or not with players, but with coaches and staff. I would think we've we've interviewed them all. Yeah, at least yeah, maybe not media. I mean, like Taquan Thornton is no, kind I'm of a quiet about guy, but in, like any type as far of one-on-one -on -one with teams. As far as the job interview, yeah, I bet yeah. you talking to coaches, they're great. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, they and and they've had two different coaching staffs that would have prepared for that. And then if you know if you're Jalen Petrie and you and, 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 and Terrell Bernard, who both kind of touched the Jim Grobe uh, staff as well a little bit, yeah, that's that's three very professional head coaches that you. You know, you had to deal with. So, yeah, it didn't surprise me. I mean, it goes back to that team in 2016 when Bryles was fired, that staff that was around, and some of the connections even to back in 2016, which is pretty, pretty amazing.